Hey guys, I'm Uburu, and I have access to World of Warships Closed Beta. I applied for it yesterday, um, and I'm going to show you guys as much gameplay as I can. I'm um, going to start off with all the uh, classes of the game, go down the ship lines, check out the uh, the uh, sort of COD-like leveling up system, which is quite interesting, um, and then we'll just go game by game through different tiers of ships. There's some very, very good parts to this game. So I'm very much looking forward to when it's released, it's going to be massive. I'm a big fan of World of Tanks, and this is fairly similar to World of Tanks, it's just, obviously it's, it's ships instead, but then it has some UI differences, uh, upgrading systems a bit different, um, but yeah, uh, let's have a look. So with the release of Closed Beta, a uh, non-disclosure agreement has been dropped. This means that um, all content for the game can be released. All closed beta access, uh, people who are with access can um, do videos, pictures, opinions. They can tell everyone about the game in every form, fortunately. So that's good for us. I, uh, I do really, really like this game. I think uh, I love World of Tanks. I've been playing it for years. I haven't played it in a couple of months, obviously. But this game is is crazy. It's, it's really really good. I'll I'll get into some of the gameplay now though. Um, before that though, we'll just quickly look at the class differences. Uh, obviously the, the the cruisers, the battleships, the aircraft carriers, etc. Uh, so here we are. This is the main page of World of Warships beta, closed beta. As you can see, it's sort of a bit similar to uh, how the hangar is for World of Tanks. You can see by the UI that it is it is very similar. It's definitely developed by the same people that have made World of Tanks. It's definitely a wargaming game. There's World of Warplanes and World of Warships. World of Tanks, they're all the same sort of UI. You know, with the uh, the ships down the bottom here with the purchase slots. The details on the right or the left, missions, modules, etc. So, in this game there are uh, four different types of ships. Um, you start off with the cruiser class which is the first for both the Japanese and the United States. And the cruiser class is, uh, they're like sort of gun carriers. They they have lots of medium caliber guns, lots and lots of them, and they just, they go berserk. And their primary role is to destroy destroyers, which um, is the second class. Um, before I go to that, the, the cruisers are very well armored. They are the second mo most armored or third, including aircraft carriers. Uh, third most, or second most, whatever you are. Uh, most armored car oh, type in the game. Um, only uh, only one that dwarfs it is the dreadnoughts, which are the battleships. So the uh, the destroyers is the second sort of tier class of vehicle, and the the destroyers are um, well, they're predominantly a um, torpedo boat. They have light guns, uh, which are generally, they don't really tend to work against many things other than cruisers. Um, they have like three or four light guns and torpedoes. Torpedoes are, are just, they're just, they, they blow this game away. For me, at least, I, the, torpedo, the torpedo boats in this game are just fantastic. I've currently got to the tier four of the torpedo boats, which is the destroyers, um, and their primary role is to destroy battleships, dreadnoughts. Uh, they lay them into the water uh, with these torpedo firing sort of rocket things, and they their limit is around ten kilometers, and they they fire in a straight line. If the torpedo hits, it does. A, it's almost an instant kill if it hits a destroyer. You need two or three to kill a cruiser, and you need probably four to six or more for a dreadnought to die. They're, they're really great. Um, they also have a few minor things like anti-aircraft guns, uh, but the primary uh, things for the cruisers actually, which I forgot to mention, is actually their anti-air guns are the best. And you need anti-air guns to fight against aircraft carriers, which are with the United States, you, met, you can uh, see here that uh, the United States has no battleships in this uh, in, at the moment. It only has aircraft carriers, and the aircraft carriers are just here. And you can see uh, where they fire bombers and 
planes. I haven't unlocked aircraft carriers just yet, uh, but I'm in the process of doing so, so I'll get back to that at some point. Uh, but another fantastic uh, class is the, as I said earlier, the Dreadnought, which at the moment is a Japanese exclusive. Uh, well, the battleships, whatever you want to call them. And they have the highest survivability. They, they, uh, they're very tough to kill. Um, and they have the best weaponry in the game. They also maneuver quite slowly. Um, probably the, they're probably the worst for maneuverability in the game. Anyway, they're the worst, and then probably aircraft carriers are second worst. Cruisers, second best. And uh, destroyers are the best at maneuvering around. So, aircraft carriers are great against pretty much all the ships. Um, obviously, destroyers are quite hard because they maneuver, and cruisers have a lot of anti-air fire, so they're a bit they're, they're a bit tough to handle. Uh, they're great against battleships, though aircraft carriers. Um, problem is, aircraft carriers they have some armor, but they're very um, weak to a certain ammo type. There are um, two different types of ammo in this game. There's uh, like a world of tanks, there's AP, armor piercing rounds, and HE, high explosive rounds. And high explosive rounds are good against um, lightly armored targets like destroyers or cruisers, to an extent cruisers, and definitely aircraft carriers. You would use high explosive against these three targets and battleships you would exclusively use armor piercing. Um, that is because uh, the armor is so thick that any damage from high explosives would be next to none. Yes, high explosives do catch, you know, cause things to catch fire, but with battleship it's a bit harder to do so. So I'll show you my current ships. Um, I have four. Well, I did have um, six, but I've just sold a couple. Uh, St. Louis is the one I, uh, which tier three cruiser. It's terrible maneuverability, but it has many guns. This is what I like about this ship. Um, I've I've played this ship for well, since since yesterday, and I do love it. It's actually a very good ship through and through. It has fourteen guns. Two on the back. Uh, I think it's two at the front, and one at the back, and then uh, four, no, I don't, there's two at the front, two at the back, and then five on each side. Either way, it's it, it's a broadside machine, so its caliber is not extensive. I don't think that's actually quite good. 152 millimeters, so 14 152 millimeters. Obviously, you can't hit the the enemy ships with all 14 shots because they're split into half of the ship. But if you were to go a full broadside, it would be six or seven rounds into the enemy, and that is pretty pretty powerful considering the reload time is quite minimal. The problem with this ship is it's, as I said, it's not very maneuverable. It, it's, yeah, it's like steering a skyscraper in the top. <laughs> Pretty terrible. So that was the St. Louis, which is a tier three cruiser, which leads on to both the aircraft carrier, tier four, and the uh, tier four cruiser, which is uh, the one I have here, which is called the Phoenix. The Phoenix is a bit of an upgrade. Um, under the ship, which which essentially looks a bit like the, the St. Louis looks a bit like uh, a cruise liner with guns on. <laughs> it's a very uh, it's like a 19 oh, it's a very early ship actually. It's only a 1906 to 1920s sort of ship. So it doesn't really surprise me that that ship didn't look very modern. But this one does. This one looks a lot more modern. It's with the new body which I just installed on it with the up, uh, upgrade system. Um, yeah, the 1938 hull, which is you can see here, is is it looks more modern for that era of ships. Tier four Phoenix. It has let's see how many guns. Ten main guns. Uh, two torpedo uh, torpedo tubes, and ten mounts of anti-aircraft guns. Some of these cruisers um, do actually, yeah, as I just read out here, there um, torpedo tubes which are mostly used with destroyers. The ones that are used on cruisers tend to have less of a range, but they're, they're sort of better in combat situations if you're face-to-face -face with another ship 
and you have torpedoes to your to your use. You, you, you use the torpedoes, and you have a, a massive advantage. That's 15,000 damage on the enemy, then you can blow them away with another broadside. It's quite convenient to actually have these on a cruiser. But then cruisers aren't the best sort of face-to-face -face hugging ships. The best face-to-face -face hugging ships are the ones uh, I have here, which is the Tier 4 battleship. This is a lovely ship. I've just unlocked this. I've only had a couple of games on it so far. The, the main things with the uh, with these big ships here, the dreadnoughts, the, the battleships, is they have massive caliber guns. You see here, 300 up to 356 millimeter guns. It doesn't have too many of them, but still, that's a, an absurd um, caliber for a gun. It has three of these, so you see one at the front, uh, two. Oh, it's at the front. Whatever. Two at the front, one at the back. And this can deal a lot of damage. Problem is the guns are very, very slow to fire and aim. So you can easily be outmaneuvered by a destroyer or a cruiser if they're coming in fast. You can't turn the guns around fast enough in order to engage them. But for a face-hugging uh, ship, this is the one to beat. Battleships are the best. Um, best damage output, um, obviously minus the torpedoes of the destroyers, but still these these guns, if you get a full broadside on a the ship, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. This, uh, well most, I don't think any actually do, yeah, the dreadnoughts, I don't think any um, have any torpedo tubes to their, uh, for their use. So it's only the cruisers and the destroyers that use torpedoes. Um, and that brings me to the last class, which is the destroyer. Destroyers are the most nimble, and they deal, if they get a full hit on all the torpedoes, uh, an absurd amount of damage. You can see here, this is the uh, destroyer I have, which is a tier 4 Isokaze, or however you want to pronounce it. And I have um, six, yeah, six torpedoes which I can fire from both sides of the ship, or one side at a time. The reload isn't too extensive, it's something like 30 seconds. And if you creep behind a battleship, if you're, cause your, um, your concealment is large with this ship, I mean, you're, you'll never be seen um, unless you're obviously really close. Um, and if you obviously have a smokescreen to your advantage, which all um, destroyers have, so you pop the, uh, pop the smoke um, and they can't see you. Obviously, if you fire your gun, they'll see you. It's the same sort of logic as World of Tanks, with the uh, hiding behind grass sort of thing. So if, all the, uh, if you creep behind a massive battleship and you fire all six torpedoes, um, yeah, it's going to be death for that battleship. It's very weak, though. This is very fast, very nimble. It can easily maneuver. Very, it's probably the best maneuver being uh, maneuvering ship in the game, or one of them. Um, this particular one, it's 87. Um, but then, if a battleship or a cruiser gets a broadside on you, you're dead, because the the damage um, of the guns, shells is is ridiculous, and your armor on a destroyer is next to none. So, those are the four classes. The car of the game. Uh, well, I haven't gone through aircraft carriages yet, actually. I've only gone, only gone through three, but the, I will be unlocking that shortly once I've gone through with the St. Louis. I need another thousand experience or something like that. Anyway, let's start with the St. Louis.